Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatifla we talked a little bit about sabr on more than one occasion and so I thought it would be beneficial for us to go as quickly as possible and make this as short as possible uh, a very brief overview of a treatise of Imam Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala which is entitled uh, a qaida or qaida fi sabr the principle of patience and so we're going to go just very quickly and just give you uh, some very quick benefits as best as we can so he begins, and this is the malachis in fact, this is also a summary of it. So he begins with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith of Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam aqal, Ajman li amr mu'min, inna amrahu kulluhu khair, wa laysa thalika li ahadin illa lil mu'min, inna sabithu sarra shakar, fa kana khairan lahu, wa inna sabithu dharra'u sabr, Muslim. So this is a hadith in Sahih Muslim, the hadith of Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, the affair of the mu'min is strange. And that's because all of the affair of the mu'min is good. And this is not the situation of anyone except the believers. If something happens to him which makes him happy, he is thankful and grateful. And if, and that is better for him. And if something happens to him that is, uh, seems harmful and difficult for him, then he is patient. And that is better for him. So we know from this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu the importance of being patient and being grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's the shahid. That's what Imam Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimullah Ta'ala is uh, using this as evidence to illustrate. So the mu'min is always between patience and gratefulness because in this life we have so many trials and tribulations. And we also have the ni'am from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, the many blessings. The Salaf, some of the Salaf used to say, Ali Iman Nisfan, Nisfa Sabr, wa Nisfa Shakr. That the, some of the Salaf used to say that Iman, faith is uh, in two halves. Half is patience and half is gratefulness. And Sabr, it has three different, is divided into three. The first division, al-sabr al-abd ala ta'atillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the first type of patience is the patience of the servant being patient with regards to obedience to Allah. For example, prayer. Prayer requires patience because uh, maybe it's difficult for you to pray five times a day. I mean, you've got to interrupt your schedule. So this takes some, uh, it takes patience and it takes striving. The second type of patience, a sabr abd, alama naha Allahu anhu, hatta la yafalhu. So the second type of patience is that the patience of the servant with regards to those things which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has prohibited him or her from, so that he does not fall into it. So, for example, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has prohibited us from zina, prohibited us from stealing. So by being it's a type of patience, the person who doesn't indulge in zina, the person who doesn't steal from people, even if their nefs and their desires encourage them to do otherwise. So it's a type of patience, that's the second uh, type of patience. The third type of patience, and before we get to the third type, some of the Salaf used to say, قال بعد السلف, أعمال البر يفلح البر والفاجر this is beautiful. Some of the Salaf used to say that 
A'mal al-bir yafalahal al-bir wa fajr That righteous, pious deeds, deeds that are deeds of righteousness and pi uh, good righteous deeds. The sinner and the pious one both do righteous deeds. But no one can stop doing the sins except the pious one. Let's look at an example real quick. So, a person, uh, you know, someone who, uh, there are people who pray, many people who pray in the masjid, maybe in the front row, and they might do sin. They might do major sin. Some of them, some of them might have girlfriends on the side. They don't, you don't see them. Some of them might have, uh, they smoke a little weed on the side and maybe drink occasionally. Some of them, they may be major liars. Some people may curse other people and uh, speak about their integrity. Some people may have bid'ah. But they still do righteous deeds like praying and they may be, be obedient to their parents. They may be very respectful. You know, they may have uh, many good deeds as well. This is the shahid. And, uh, and however, the one who is able to restrain from the ma'asi, from the major sins, and from sins in general, this can only be done by the one who is a righteous person. Because that means they're not sinning. They're not involved in uh, uh, major sins. And so they already have the characteristic of righteousness. So this is what some of the Salafi used to say, and that's a big fa'idah for us. The third type of patience, a sabr al-abd, so the third type of patience is the patient of the servant that is afflicted by something not from their choice and this is of this one is of two types meaning the the, the so he says no la fihi so the first type of uh, this this patient servant who's afflicted by something is the one who's afflicted by something that's totally out of his hands. Totally out of his hands. Uh, for example, their the sickness. This person is afflicted with some sort of illness and some sort of sickness. Uh, so they are patient with this this sickness and this illness that they are. Uh, afflicted with and they strive their best to be uh, you know they're pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second one is the one who is afflicted by the harm of the people in his wealth or in his honor or regarding his self maybe physically and this one is is very difficult to be patient with and now let's look at an example. For example, when people are talking about you making takfir of you, making tibdi of you, people call you mumayir, people call you this and that without any dalil or in accordance with their ra'i, their opinion, then this is, this requires patience for you not to, uh, you know, to deal with that. Patience that you restrain yourself from physically dealing with them, maybe. Patience that uh, that you don't get back in a refutation war back and forth. Look at how many people, look how many people have wasted years attacking. I, I'm amazed that some people who were refuted six years ago are still being refuted and people are still looking at their khutbahs and stuff like this and refuting and busying themselves and busying the people with these individuals. And some of these individuals may be from Ahl Sunnah or they may have some, some shortcomings. Okay? But the people are still busy on their social media following them following the video cutting and pasting because i don't know what what else, they, they have nothing better to do well i understand so it requires patience on the person whose honor is being attacked especially if it's done unjustly so with regards to that sheikh al-islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions that the end result for the one who's patient with this is that they will receive happiness and 
they will receive assistance from Allah and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and security and an increase in their love of Allah and increase in Allah's love for them. And Allah will raise them in the eyes of the people. And subhanAllah, let me give you an example of which I've witnessed. I know some of the ulama from Ahlul Sunnah like Sheikh Abdul Razak Al-Badr, for example. And he used to be attacked immensely. Him, Sheikh Ibrahim Rahaili, uh, some of the other mashayikh by, at that time, Fali Al-Harbi. SubhanAllah, where is Fali Al-Harbi now? Who only extreme uh, Hadadiyun follow this guy now? Everyone left him. And those other ulama, especially Sheikh Abdul Razak, Allah favored him and Sheikh Ibrahim to be teachers in the Haram. In the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid after that. Just raised their status with students around the world. Look at, especially Sheikh Abdul Razak, because Sheikh, uh, Sheikh uh, Ibrahim has been, uh, you know, attacked by several different mashayikh and his honor has been, uh, you know, tainted and, and, and so on and so forth. But he's still teaching and still benefiting the people. But especially Sheikh Abdul Razak, no matter how many people uh, tried to attack him. Allah just raised him when he goes to Indonesia and plays like this. What I heard, you know, I heard. I, I definitely will say in the thousands would attend. And so that shows Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because of his patience. Because you never hear Sheikh Abdul Razak attacking the people and Sheikh Ibrahim, even though he's been attacked by how many Mashaikh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hayy, Sheikh Rabi, Sheikh, you know, Ketra, or several anyway, and then others who bite on the bandwagon. But you never hear Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, you know, going at those people's honor. He only defends himself when it became necessary. So you see that Allah raises them. He raises their status and the other people only get raised in fitna. That takes patience. And Sheikh Al-Salaam Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions just some of the fuai. We're going to end with this. That... The one, the patient one, that they, you'll find many things that they, that they benefit from this. That uh, for one, you'll see that the, what they, they do from their patients, that they will begin to do things which are in accordance with obedience to Allah. Another benefit is that the that you'll see that they'll become more aware of their sins and so the person will hopefully be more active in making toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and another benefit of being patient is that the servant will be receive the reward in the hereafter and see the benefit in this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised them. Another benefit and an attribute of the patient ones is that they also are forgiving and they pardon other people. So then by doing this, they will taste the sweetness of faith and they will taste the sweetness of pardoning. Because if you pardon a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for wronging you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pardon you. Another benefit of this patience is that the one who harms people and is always seeking revenge uh, on people for harming them that what they will inherit is Allah will eventually humiliate them because they're always eager to get what they believe is their right and they're always seeking to reciprocate harm. But if they pardon, then they will gain the benefit as we mentioned in the prior, uh, the prior benefit. Another benefit of being one of the patient ones is that the one who pardons the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pardon him or her. And that is an immense fight. Another benefit is the one in, in, in the harm, and this is kind of the opposite, the one who busy busies him, his self or herself with seeking revenge for 
uh, what people have, have said about them, always going back and forth, defending themselves for every single situation. They're always going back and forth that you'll see that they will waste a lot of time in this dunya. They will lose a lot of time because all their time will be going back and forth. Look at all the parties that are going back and forth over nonsense. Another benefit of being patient is that, and, and that uh, of patience in general, is that min sunnah tarq al-intiqam li hudur al-nafs. So from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is also leaving off seeking revenge from the people uh, in order to just defend oneself and raise oneself up. Another benefit of being patient is that patience is a part of Iman. So by increasing your patience, you are in fact increasing your faith, you are increasing your Iman. Another benefit of being patient when you are being harmed by the creation is that this shows, this will give you the strength to control yourself because patience, part of patience is restraint. So if you restrain yourself from seeking vengeance and, and, and restrain yourself in general and be patient, this teaches you more self-control. Another benefit of patience is that the one who is patient that they will know with certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist them and help them and support them. So being patient, you gain the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us of the be of the sabirin. Another benefit, and we'll, we'll just end with this, is that the patient one who's patient when other people are harming them, it will be it will necessitate if they are not reciprocating the harm that the one who is harming them will eventually perhaps feel uh, sorrow for oppressing you and that they will uh, you know will seek to be excused by you or at least eventually they will stop being harmful towards you so if you're not reciprocating, say if someone's making tech theater to D of you all the time or just attacking your honor, calling you a fasic, whatever the case may be, and you don't get into a going back and forth with them, but you're patient with their harm, eventually either they will cease or they will feel sorrow or maybe they will find oppression themselves from that or they will seek your forgiveness for what they have done. And those are just some of the benefits that Imam Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentions. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of the Sabaneen.